Oh yeah, Super Bowl Sunday, gorgeous day. And I have the 818. I know what I have to do. Call Lightning Rod. Calling Lightning Rod, Hutch. All right. Dude, I got the 818 at Super Bowl Sunday. Nobody's on the roads. Burn some tires on that. When are you picking me up? <laughs> I'll be right over. Chop, chop. Let's see it. All right. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Come on, it's not, 818. Not today, Stiggins. <laughs> I'm, I'm not prepared for this business. Oh, man. I'm going to get you for this. I'm going to get you for this. <laughs> chop, chop. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. One, two. Oh! <laughs> <it's Molly>! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Super Bowl Sunday, and uh, we're in beautiful, sunny San Diego. And oh, uh, you came up with a really nice car to uh, put wheels on our desk. Right? I was sitting there like, thinking there's no way I'm going to watch the Super Bowl today. I'm not going to sit in that meat locker behind a wooden table on a car lift again when we have the opportunity in San Diego to get out and do this. We call this range testing in the business. What do you have to do it like three times and prove that the, you can drain and fill the batteries all three times before you give the car back? Somebody's got to do it. Uh, I, I'm going to sign up for that job. <laughs> I got my sunblock on today. Yeah. Put a hat on oh, to cover geez. my dome. Yeah, lightning rod. Do you see these new <laughs> EV show hats and shirts that we got? Oh but boy. I think those are gonna be on the website soon. Everybody's looking at this car. This is ridiculous. I feel like I'm like in a pink Miata with you or something like that. Don't even put <laughs> me in that category with you. No. No, this gets more looks than like Ferrari 308s. Check out that dog looking at you. <laughs> hey buddy. <laughs> that dog knows a good electric oh. car when he sees one. You're just going to gloss over the 308 comment, right? Insane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> 818. <laughs> it's electric. We're being accosted on the highway. <laughs> Did you notice that car next to us? They were filming. I oh, know. I saw the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> we need like, a camera just to film them back. We haven't even gotten a quarter mile down the highway and like people are filming. And then we need to put an EV yeah. show magnet on the outside of the car. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I you know, you remind me of the video that I did last night with all the uh, compilation of the Tesla reactions. Tesla is doing all oh, our yeah. work for us. Other than oh, using me, I want to take a look at the uh, the Tesla uh, compilation that oh, we you put together. Let's roll the footage. Let's check it out right now. It's incredible. That's you have to great. see it. Oh. Insane mode. <laughs> Oh, that is so awesome. Wow. Oh, shit, bro. What the f- <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Oh, oh, no. Holy shit. <laughs> That's crazy. She's the wall. You go. God. Damn it, that motherfucker. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, shit. <laughs> oh my god! Oh shit! <laughs> 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 <laughs>
shit. First of all, you can't fucking do that to people. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking fantastic. Ooh. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Whoa! Experiences. Sorry guys, I do. Whoa! So, uh, besides not being interested in Super Bowl, what else is new? Oh, I was looking through Craigslist and found another car. Oh, geez, a 308? Uh, no, Pininfarina designed it. Oh, a Ferrari. Can you guess? Well, oh, you know what? We do have another Ferrari, but that's not what I'm going to tell you about. Well, do tell. Inquiring minds want to know. Fiat 124. Oh, you got a Spider. 1980. No way. Two owners. No way. Garage for most of its life. Oh, man. I'm not going to spoil any of it, but you know what? <laughs> we have a new project. God, of course you do. Why finish a project and you can start another one, like Sean at Audubon always says, right? Yeah, you want yeah. to see it? Yeah, might as well. Go ahead. Let's go take a look All at right. it. All right, roll tape. Good. Rock and roll. Hey, welcome. This is the electricgt.com second project after the Ferrari. And how fitting is it to get a car that is a direct cousin to the Ferrari? Fiat owned Ferrari. This car is about seven months uh, newer than the Ferrari's manufacturing date. It's a 1980 Fiat 2000. It's got two owners and 32 years is the last ownership's hold time on this car. It's been in a garage for almost all of its life. 70,000 miles on it. It runs perfect. There's no rust anywhere on it. It actually drives pretty damn well too. It is fun. I've been cruising around in it. I'm like getting a good hang of it. Uh, Convertible top works on it. It is the perfect Ferrari kit car. We'll pull the motor out, start thinking about designs. This is the four cylinder carbureted US edition, as you can tell by the safety features on the front, the bumper, which doesn't really look that good. This car is a beauty, Pininfarina design, the same as the designer for the 308. When we put this thing together with electric motors, it's gonna blow. There's 82 horsepower in the original four cylinders. The two AC50s on this are gonna put this thing at around 250 horsepower. It's gonna go. I can't wait to see what comes with this. Stay tuned for more projects. This is gonna be with EV West and SRD helping out on this. Uh, it's gonna get exciting. A cool little car, listen to this. Got a kind of a nice rev, perfectly run, and the thing's awesome. I love it. <laughs> so dude, so our Wednesday nights now are pretty much shot because of this new secret meeting club we have. It's, we, a, it's an awesome secret. Should we tell the viewers a little bit about it? Break it out. What are we gonna drop? How much e are we gonna tell them? EV1000. Oh, the cat's out of the bag. The only, the first EV Baja race truck to finish the Baja 1000. Whoa, easy. It's going to happen this year. You're, you're getting that. I'm out of banking yourself. on it. I'll bet. <laughs> I'll double down on the Rochambeau bet. So, yeah, we are going to enter the Baja 1000. We're going to hot swap batteries. We're going to bring seven. Like a Makita drill. Like a Makita out. drill. 40 batteries or something? Well, you know me, 720 kilowatt hours. I gotta throw numbers out there. There's a half a million dollars yeah. worth of batteries. Oh, more than that. <laughs> more than that. So these are all gonna be pre-charged. By the way, we're just borrowing them. <laughs> Nobody knows. So they're gonna be pre-charged, borrowed batteries <laughs> all around the course. All around the and course. And we're slamming batteries in and out yeah. like a Makita drill. Yeah. To keep a consistent, fast pace. Yeah. In a non-existent electric division. Yeah, we're doing this. We are creating our own division. So we're basically going in and we're just going to build what we want to build. It looks a little bit like a Dakar uh, the rally off road. Is, yeah, yeah. Right. So uh, almost you know, like that Peugeot. Right. Almost like the that Peugeot. That's insane. <laughs> our Chinese R&D department, right? It's incredible. <laughs> so we have a really good idea of logistics to pull this off. Yeah. Yeah. And the design on the car is coming together incredibly fast. You know what makes me nervous is that we could actually do this. We could actually be the guys, right? Because if we actually finish this race, from that point forward, everything is different. Like we're just a tiny little shop, right? Like we're, you know, 
Like we just mess around in our shop. We're nobody compared to the big powers that be out there in the automotive world. And that's we're, no, a, we're nobody, right? That, that's a historical first. And if we come in and we finish this race, let alone finish, but maybe, you know, maybe even do a decent time on batteries, that is really going to change stuff. What are you going to do if you sell, to celebrate if you finish this? You got the party planning committee. I mean, I think you have to do something personally just to, you know, <laughs> I'm going to come up with something for you. <laughs> Unbelievable. I say we just cruise up and down the coast. Why don't we go get a cup of coffee? Maybe uh, get a bite to eat? You're Maybe buying. A bowl taco? You're buying. Oh, geez. You're buying. Rochambeau for it? Uh, best of three. Best of three. One, two, three. Damn. One, two, three. Two elements. Oh, You're buying. Just like two that. Two zero. <laughs> Uh, product of boarding school. I know the inside <laughs> tricks to Rochambeau. So, dude, oh my God, Formula E this month was insane, dude. Buenos Aires, Buenos Aires was insane. Like, <laughs> Julie came out and was, what's going on? Because I was yelling at the TV. It was one of the best races. The Puerto Madero district, and it is the Puerto Madero street circuit and it is going to play host to 35 laps of racing where that man, Sebastian Buemi, will start on pole position. The crowd are on their feet in the background as we get ready for the start of the fourth round of the championship. We've got all the lights on and we go green in Buenos Aires. It's a lot of wheel spin for Buemi, but he manages to keep it all together. Good start as well from Heidfeld on the run down towards the first corner. He might get past Alcashwari. It's a hairpin left-hander that they're coming up to. Heidfeld looks to the outside line, gets a little bit of a tap, but gets up into second place. Great move from Nick Heifert around the outside of the first corner. This is the quick part of the circuit, 10, 11, and 12. Listen to this. Look at them, they've all got their back end stepping out, but it's Buemi leading the way. It's very, very close to the wall in the chicane there, which is a little worrying. I love this shot, <laughs> just pitching the car sideways. One, they've got the back marker, Michaela Ciruti up in front. That could get a bit close, and Bruno Senna could take advantage. And here comes the Grassi up the inside, forces his way through at the hairpin at turn five. Setting oh, up. Antonio Felix da Costa side by side with John Eric Byrne, and da Costa gets through, does he, on the run down to the chicane? Black and red Venturi of Nick Heidfeld has closed right into the back of him again he dropped back for a while but now he is right back under the uh, gearbox of the car in front Heidfeld's in trouble Alkashwari's attacking him and uh, it looks as though Alkashwari's got through I think Nick Heidfeld went wide at the chicane and now Sam Bird is going to attack as well so Nick Heidfeld falling back through the order Sam Bird gets alongside in the virgin car the next corner is a hairpin left-hander so that'll be Bird through too whoa big lock up on the front right can he get it stopped to cost the season opportunity tries to force his way past Heidfeld he's overtaken here Lose. oh Buemi is he going to hit the wall oh, he's broken his front right and he is out of the race that's unfortunate oh Degrassi's off as well Lucas Degrassi race leader out of the race as well that means Nick Heidfeld moves into first place Whoa, very, very wide from Al He might have hit the wall there on the exit. He's got Jean-Eric Byrne right up behind him. And the battle of the ex-Toro Rosso drivers continue. Well, Byrne's not happy with that. He's not happy. I think people Al was defending. And he's going for it again. There's contact. Al nudged wide. That was a classic touring car move. Now the race leader has been given a drive-through penalty now for speeding in the pit lane. And usable. Energy remaining, big lock-up from Abt, and he hits Alkashwari, and that allows Prost through. What a shame for Alkashwari, but Byrne's going to hold it on the inside. No, he's, he's never going to get that stopped, and Prost holds the second place. Alkashwari is going to come through, and well, Antonio Felix yep. da Costa, the checker flag falls, and it's a win for Amlin Aguri. So the checker flag falls, Antonio Felix da Costa takes victory, Prost second, third for PK Jr. Alkashwari fourth, Bruno Senna fifth, Daniel Abt can't believe what's happened. They were absolutely nowhere. They had a revelation. Uh, it's the champagne on the podium. Mark Preston gets the soaking and he is loving it. Antonio Felix da Costa, who once again shows why he is one of the top young talents. There is Antonio Felix da Costa, very happy with his victory. There's no doubt about that. So I get so pumped watching Formula E because this is coming to town, like it's coming to Long Beach, right? We're gonna have a little get together, we're gonna get some EV show viewers, 
We're gonna hang out. Yeah, we gotta put out the uh, details of where we wanna meet and tickets and the gathering, and we'll have a big party at a restaurant and get into the grandstand. Right. See if we can't get some press passes for EV show guys to get into the pits. Oh, meet man. some of the drivers. We wanna be a regular covering uh, a media show of the Formula E. We love it. Oh, it's gotta be a consistent part of our show. This is great. I haven't been to the Long Beach since I was time. a kid. Yeah. <laughs> really? And it was loud. <laughs> they don't let you out much. <laughs> hey. Oh, Who boy. let the dog out? <laughs> hey, uh, let's get some coffee. You're buying. Oh, jeez. I already won that one. <laughs> Rochambeau, two for oh. Guys in cars getting coffee. Does this seem familiar? Hey, thanks for the coffee. Mm. Ooh, that's hot. I'm going to uh, I'm going to use my new toy. The Fleer? Look at that. Oh yeah, that's quite hot. Which one's hotter? That is Actually, yours is a little hotter. Thinner glass. It actually does that tell how much caffeine's in here cuz I might be in trouble. I think you're in trouble. That one is literally <laughs> white hot. <laughs> I want to see it. <laughs> That's incredible. Right? Yeah, that's insane. Oh, you might want to check something else out with that. Oh my. Is it that white thing hot? Is smoking hot. Is it white hot? Hot. <laughs> white hot. <laughs> you know, it's not all fun and games. I actually found something useful for this in the shop. Oh, checking out a car, no doubt. The battery, of dis the, of the dissipation of batteries yeah. and motors? It's only a toy until you figure out something you can do with it. Then it becomes a tool. Okay. Right? So what'd you do with it? Well, let's check this out. Okay, I want to see it. All right. Hey guys, this month for our cool tool of the month, we got the FLIR One thermal imaging camera. Uh, it's almost like a toy, this thing is so cool. So what we're gonna do, it's a real time saver when you need to figure out, maybe you have a loose connection and you need to analyze the battery pack. In the past, we were using one of those laser uh, operated temperature guns and it really takes a lot of time to go through each thing and the FLIR One thermal Im imaging camera really cuts that down. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna kind of analyze this thing as it sits now, the car's cold and uh, uh, Trent's gonna go take the car out, put it through its paces, and then we're gonna bring it back in, put it on the lift, and we're gonna take a quick look at it and see where the heat buildup points are and uh, see how good the FLIR One works for us. Okay, so here's the battery pack, and you can see that uh, the car's been sitting overnight, so everything's real nice and even, pretty much same temperature across the pack. I can even um, put the crosshairs on this and get an exact reading in the center, and right now it looks we're about 58 degrees Fahrenheit. So here's the image of our motor, and uh, it's pretty much uh, nice and cool, sitting at room temperature. We haven't driven it this morning, and uh, let's go warm it up. All right, well, uh, here's the part where Trent goes and gives the car a nice uh, fast drive around the block, and then we'll take a look at it when he gets back. All right, Trent, do your stuff. <laughs> hoo -yah. All right, well, just uh, first check here. We're gonna look at the wheels and the uh, brake rotors. Uh, apparently, uh, Trent was on the brakes a little bit there. Oh, well, nice to see the heat. We can actually turn on the uh, crosshair feature and we can measure the temperature at the center there. It's still room temperature, about 75 degrees. And then as we move over, you can see it goes over 200 degrees on the rotor. Okay, so here's the motor from below and you can see how uh, the case definitely dissipated a lot of the heat and it's holding uh, most of the heat inside the motor by the brush holders and the commutator. Okay, so here you can see the uh, view of the battery pack and you can definitely see the heat dissipating from the battery straps. And we also have a little bit of heat up here. Uh, looks like Trent was listening to some music while he was driving around because the amplifier for the audio system is kicking off some heat. And we do have a battery right about there that looks a little warmer than the others. So, uh, that's something nice to tell you. You might want to take a closer look at that battery. All right, so you can see from the motor and the batteries, we have pretty normal operation here, which is what's to be expected. We just went through, you know, everything's a brand new installation. All of our battery bolts are torqued to spec, um, but we're really not taking full advantage of what the FLIR camera can do here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna uh, simulate a common situation is where you have a battery bolt loosen up and you get a high impedance connection. You're gonna build up heat in that area. And uh, this can be a cause of uh, some sort of problem in the car. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and loosen a bolt. We're gonna take it for a drive and see what kind of results we get. Okay, I'm not sure how uh, 
well, that camera's picking it up. We'll do a little overlay of the video, but you can clearly see the strap that we just, I mean, just slightly loosened it up and uh, it's white hot compared to the other ones. And uh, I think we just went around the building once or twice, a real short ride, not even a quarter mile driving on it. And you can see the uh, visual difference. So you can see like a, a tool like this is real handy. I think you can pick up a FLIR one. They're about $300, cool. uh, but uh, that's it. Just wanted to show how you can use a FLIR one and how it pertains to electric cars, especially with connections and loose connections. Your high impedance connections are definitely going to heat up. They're going to be super easy to see on the FLIR one. And uh, I think that's about it for now. We'll, uh, we'll see you later. Oh man, can you believe how well that thing works? That's incredible. Yeah, I mean, the white strap, I mean, that thing was white hot. We just backed the bolt off a teeny bit, went around the building once, and it was clear as day. You can see right through the car, see the motor, the batteries, yeah. and where all the yeah. heat is generated. You know, I think Jehu burned up a contactor. He could probably use one of these. We should get a fear for <laughs> Jehu, <laughs> right? So, you know, and we have some stuff planned for it. We're gonna uh, analyze a couple of the products that we make our chill plates for and make sure that our water channels are in the appropriate spot. So we're gonna warm up some inverters and take some heat patterns off of that. And, and we're gonna use it to improve our products. So we got some neat things planned for So you it. can validate the efficiency of the cooling yeah. using that yeah. filter on that. Yeah. And it's just a snap-on device, aftermarket yeah. right onto an iPhone. Just like that. Yeah, I gotta love it. I mean, this is, you know, you look around for thermal imaging cameras, like $25,000, and then they have this iPhone one. It works just as good, and it's like $300. i am going to come up with some new ideas for that camera. Yeah. Oh, I bet you could. <laughs> hey, you know who I heard from the other day? I can guess. Osamu. I want to go over there and yeah. visit him in Japan. Real wheel drive, drifting Prius, and he sent us footage. They did their first uh, demo event. They did a drifting event over there in Japan, and uh, he sent us some footage, and it's incredible. Oh, he's a fan, and uh, he, he has a major following oh, yeah. in Japan. Oh, yeah. I mean, I well, we need to go over there. I uh, know we're gonna we go. Go. To go, EV show there. is gonna yeah. go over there yeah. on a media trip. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he was drifting, wait, look at his hand up out the window in oh, this yeah. video. <laughs> wait till you see his hand up <laughs> waving at the crowd drifter. Yeah. while he's doing it. Let's... Oh, this is great. Do you know, Twin Nines, see, they, they built it up, they took it to a racetrack, and they like kind of vetted it at the racetrack, and then did a drift event, but uh, hey, check it out. Yeah. Let's see that video. Yeah. Dude, I love the crowd enthusiasm. Did you see that? I mean, they had the hugest crowd. I, I, the, I've been watching the internet and the EV show and Osama has been pushing it. We have a tremendous yeah. following in Japan. Yeah, he's got a huge following. He, he's, he's a rock star in Japan. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. We're coming to see you. Yeah, yeah. You know what makes drifting fun? A lot of Because we tried this in, in our BMW and we have a little bit of a tough time drifting because we don't have power steering. Well, I've seen you've been busy on the Jeep project getting yeah. to work like you should be. But we've got manual steering. Yeah. And works great on the racetrack. But for drifting, where you need that full, quick opposite lock, it just, you need power steering and we don't have it. So we've been looking around, trying to figure out a really good power steering solution for the race car. And uh, we came up with some stuff and I just kind of wanted to run through it for some of our guys that are building. You know, let them know what options they have that are out there for them, How's right? this power steering gonna work on the uh, gravel machine gun? Yeah, right? <laughs> well, we're gonna do the electric one. We're gonna do the servo assist. Okay. Yeah, the end line on the steering shaft and uh, should be great. But I went through all the options because you got hydraulic, you got you know on shaft, you have on the rack servo assist. So I broke it down. You could probably even follow this one. Well, thanks for the challenge. Yeah, right? We'll check it out. Let's see it. <laughs> okay. Hey, thanks Hutch and uh, myself. Uh, coffee was great, by the way. 
Uh, what a day, Super Bowl Sunday. Anyways, uh, we're gonna go over some power steering options for you today, what's available for your electric conversion. Uh, we have our 78 Jeep out here. We got 30 inch tires on it, so we're definitely gonna need to upgrade the steering system to some power steering. So the options that are currently available to us is uh, basically your belt driven hydraulic pump. This is uh, what you see standard in, in most of the older vehicles. Uh, it's a hydraulic system, so that's kind of the drawback. But sometimes it's easier to just keep that factory rack and pinion in there that's hydraulic driven. You can throw one of these on it. We sell a pulley and an adapter plate system that you can mount to your electric motor. So you can keep this and you can run it. And this also has a, a valve system on the bottom so you can change out this valve if you need more or less feedback from your pump. The drawback with this, is that the pros are it's really cheap and inexpensive, easy to implement. The drawbacks are it's a hydraulic system and you got to idle your motor. and You don't really want to do that with an electric car. So uh, if you don't want to idle the motor, but you want to keep your hydraulic system, the next uh, option is repurposing an OEM system. This is a, uh, a Ford uh, electric hydraulic pump. You can get uh, the most popular one seems to be the one out of the MR2. Um, although lately it seems like those are getting tougher and tougher to find uh, even on eBay. Um, but this is going to give you a hydraulics assist to your uh, rack and pinion uh, in an electric motor form. Recently, we've seen a lot of the late model cars switch over to an electric assist, and we really like this. So we're now offering this item here from ePower Steer. This system goes in line on your steering shaft, so you actually cut your shaft, and they give you a nice little coupler unit here, and uh, you couple it in, and then this U-joint is splined, and it fits right onto the unit. It's a great little system. It's got a uh, really nice control, sophisticated control unit here, and we actually have a uh, dash-mounted knob you can adjust the amount of output power, which uh, some people really like this. You can turn it up if you're in a parking lot, turn it down if you're on the freeway or dial it in uh, for the weight of your vehicle. And if you're really good at coding, like some of these guys are, they'll put an Arduino board or something like that. This is just a pot signal, so you can adjust it and you can actually take speed input from the car and have what we call a variable assist power steering. So uh, um, if you're slower in a parking lot, it gives you a ton of assist and then on the freeway, it dials it back to give you a little bit better road feel. So um, that's really the ideal way to go. And another little electric assist that's available to us is we actually have these um, on the rack. So you can see this system here. This is uh, from a smart car, a Mercedes-Benz smart car. And uh, we got a lot of guys that are doing scratch builds. If you don't even have a rack for your car, if you're doing a, uh, one of these trike builds that people are doing or a tube frame car, an 818, anything like that, uh, we can actually provide the whole entire rack with the servo assist on the rack. And so that gives you one tight little package. There's not a lot of stuff to install. And uh, again, the electric assists are gonna be nice and quiet. They're gonna be your preferred solution over a hydraulic system. A Little bit more work if you don't have one in there. But again, it's the preferred solution. It's gonna be quiet and it's gonna draw less current than the electric hydraulic pump. That's about it for a brief overview of some of the uh, options available for your power steering system and your electric car. And I'm gonna just uh, kick it right back over to the coffee shop. We'll see you guys later later. Uh, back to myself and Hutch. Uh, so John's been busy. Uh, you know, I paid them extra to give you a you totally did extra that. little zip, 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 You know, zip. when I go to 7-Eleven and get Mike's coffee in the middle of the day, I go to the bar, you know, they have those little shock things and they say, don't take more than two a day. You've been spiking always, my drink. I spike his You've coffee with extra my drink. caffeine. You should see how aggro he goes in the <laughs> shop at his desk in the day. It is so fun. <laughs> I'm on to you. Well, then I gave him hazelnut. He's all, man, oh. you know I don't like flavored coffee. He threw a fit. But then I hid the shock. Oh, wait, wait, let's just back hazelnut. up. I should throw a fit for you bringing me hazelnut coffee. Like, seriously, dude, you drink hazelnut coffee? No, it's all they had left that was hot. I'm not buying it. I got the last cup of coffee. I'm Columbia. not buying it. What do we got? Where are we going next? Oh, we Where are going, we going straight. Next? We're going to talk about John because John oh, sold the motor out of the Earl. Mr. He, Earl. Yeah, no, he's trying to finance yep. the project. So we said, pull that junk motor yep. out. And so yep. he's on a pallet, UPS. It was gone last week. Yep. And so he's going 100% electric on the Earl. Yeah, he's Hybrid's ready. Out. He's doing a couple quick calculations. I think he's going to throw a little reduction gear in there and get his RPM just right. So when he's cruising at 70, he's like right in that efficiency zone. So, so are you ready to see his numbers? Do you want to know how he starts oh, his yeah. segments? Oh, him and Trent. Let's see it, John. Yeah, let's see it, John, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is the and uh, him and uh, Trent, you know, they had the calculator out. They did some math and they scribbled a bunch of stuff on a napkin and uh, we cleaned it up and put it on the screen for him. It does make it easy to see what you need to do technology-wise in order to make it a perfectly performing bike. And they did a good job. Yeah, well, let's check it out. I'll let you do the little uh, hand clap and we'll oh. check it out. Yeah. Oh, John. There we go. <laughs> <laughs>
So here's the math we were talking about. We put a little something together for you. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to make this math easy enough for anyone to follow along. To determine motor needs at a given speed, you'll need to work backward from the tire. The Earl tire is 28 inches in diameter, which gives it a nearly 88 inch circumference, which is 7.3 feet, meaning 7.3 feet is how far it will roll in one complete turn. The Earl needs a top speed of 70 miles per hour, which is 369,000 feet per hour. Taking that 369,000 feet per hour and dividing it by the 7.3 feet travel distance gives us just over 50,000 revolutions per hour, or divided by 60 minutes in an hour is 840 revolutions per minute. That's the RPM at the wheel. Now we already decided the gearbox has a ratio of 4.6 to 1, so 840 times 4.6 is 3800 RPM at the motor shaft. That's how fast the motor will need to turn for the Earl to roll down the road at 70 miles per hour. I know that math was super exciting and uh, hopefully we'll step it up for you a little bit in the next episode and next update on the Ural. I'll see you next month. Right back at you, Doc. <laughs> Great segment. Thanks a lot for doing that. Uh, oh, the next man. segment is one you know, of our... I, I gotta say, I like how they broke that down because it, sometimes we just skip these like really basic steps in the beginning and it's really important what the motor's spinning at. And you know, for the most part, they're the same speeds the gas motors want to be at. They're not 10,000, they're not 2,000. You know, that three, 4,000 RPM is about where you want to be at your, uh, you know, cruising well, that speed. that motor can go 75, 8,000 RPM, so it's going to go a oh, lot yeah. faster than 70 it, if he wants. Well, let's just say it can go a lot faster than you'd ever want to go on a Russian-built Earl motorcycle. Yeah, they didn't tell us what the high end was on that, but I wouldn't drive it at the high end. Hey, we heard from our little buddy. We got a great video. Oh, our co-host. Our favorite co-host. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. I, uh... I, you know, I hope the camera's not rolling because I'm going to admit I learned a lot of stuff. I almost, I didn't have to use my abacus for a change. He made it so simple for me. I love Quit how dating yourself. put this program together. I think it's a great segment. Uh, it, it's really watchable. It went by in like two seconds. I think it's uh, Yeah, good. yeah. I mean, uh, I, I guess let's just roll the footage. Uh, Jehu Garcia talking about batteries. Let's see it, Jehu. All right, Thanks. roll it. Welcome to another Quick Tip segment on the EV show. At the request of many viewers, today we're going to be discussing some of the basics. Today's topic is going to be batteries, different chemistries, different form factors, and different configurations. What does it all mean, and which one should you choose for your own project? So let's get into it. Batteries have been around with us for a very long time. We've all grown up using the non-rechargeable types. One of those, the dry cell, was invented in 1880 in Japan and has been in use up until the 80s when the electrolyte was replaced by an alkaline type, giving birth to the modern alkaline dry cell battery found on most of our modern electronic devices. But of course, none of those types of batteries are good for our electric vehicles as they are disposable. But rechargeables, now these are a godsend and they make our EVs viable for the very first time. Some of the first rechargeables to surface were the lead acid type. These have found many uses in our lives, but by far the most popular one is an automotive. All of our cars have a 12 volt lead acid battery under the hood. Now NICATs or nickel cadmium were a very popular rechargeable replacement battery. They have now mostly been replaced by nickel metal hydrate, but you can still find them in some applications. Nickel metal hydrate is currently the most popular rechargeable cell available in most consumer electronic sizes. This is due to their lower cost and large capacity. They even found their way into automotive application in the early hybrid cars. So if you were driving an electric car in the 90s or 2000s, chances are you had nickel metal hydrate cells somewhere in your trunk. So this brings us to lithium ion. This chemistry is comprised of a large family of slightly varying chemistries that of course share lithium ions. Among the varying chemistries are the ones known as lipos or lithium polymer due to the polymer plastic soft case they come in. These are very popular in RC world due to their amazing ability to deliver most of their energy in just a few minutes. Now, lithium iron phosphate, on the other hand, is the most popular type of battery among DIY EVers. This is because they are very stable, 
They contain no acid or any toxic substances and they are rather accessible to us. Lithium cobalt oxide is another popular chemistry and is very similar to lipose but available in different form factors like rectangular and cylindrical metal enclosures. Now all of these chemistries can be used to power an EV with some degree of success, but some are just not very practical. Lead acid, for example, is too heavy and has a very short lifespan. Well, NICATs have the famously known memory effect. Lipos can be used, but special consideration should be taken due to the fact that they come in a very soft polymer pouch and some kind of protective casing should be used. So let's concentrate on the most practical and popular types, lithium iron phosphate and lithium cobalt oxide. There are some differences between the two chemistries. Their nominal voltage is slightly different, for example. Lithium iron phosphate is at 3.3 volts, while lithium cobalt oxide comes in at 3.7. Form factors differ also. Lithium iron phosphate can be found on both cylindrical and prismatics, while lithium cobalt oxide is often found in cylindrical and pouch forms. Life cycle also differs between them. Lithium iron phosphate has typically around 2,000 cycles, while lithium cobalt oxide is mostly rated at around 1,000 cycles. All in all, these two types are going to be your best bet. Any of the other chemistries will be either too exotic and thus too expensive, or just not practical. So let's look at the different shapes cells are manufactured and how that can affect how you use them. Wiring configuration is going to largely depend on the cell form factor chosen. There are mainly two forms available, large blocky prismatic cells and small pouch or cylindrical types. Prismatics are very popular in the DIY conversion crowd because they are rather easy to install. Few hardware is required and most of the time a metal box and some braided interconnects is all that is needed to get you going. Pouch and cylindrical cells are more of a challenge due to the fact that more cells are usually required to make a battery pack. You have to make some form of structure not only to house them but connect them electrically. Take for example my recent endeavor to use 18650 cells to power my Samba. There was a lot more work in designing, assembling and soldering that went into that project than installing my lithium iron phosphate pack. Let's look at an easy way to figure out how to wire the different types of cells to different systems. Let's say you want to use a DC system using two of the most popular components out there. A Salton Junior 600 amp controller and a Warp 9 motor and you want to run the whole system at 200 volts. If using lithium iron phosphate, you could use 60 cells in series. Fully charged voltage would be 3.5 volts times 60, 210 volts. And fully discharged, 180 volts. If you want to use lithium cobalt, you could use 54 cells in series. Fully charged voltage would be 4.2 volts times 54, 226 volts. And fully discharged, 162 volts. Now, to determine the minimum required size of each cell needed, you take the maximum system load, in this case 600 amps. This is a peak rating. The nominal load is going to be around half of that. You should design your system to handle this load to prevent your controller from suffering an early death due to running near peak all the time. So you take the 300 amp number, divide that by the cell C rating, C rating is the maximum load that can be safely applied to each cell. It's usually specified by the manufacturer. In the case of lithium iron phosphate, it's usually 3C, and in lithium cobalt, it's usually 1.5 to 2C. Thus, the smallest cell size you should be using if choosing lithium iron phosphate should be around 100 amp hours and 150 amp hours for lithium cobalt oxide cells. But what if 100 amp hour cells don't fit the space you need them to? Or what if you can't get the exact size of cell needed for some other reason? Can smaller cells be combined and used in place of bigger ones? Yes. Let's say you have access to 50 amp hour cells. 
you can use two cells and connect them in parallel to each other to get your 100 amp hour required size or you can use four 25 amp hour cells connected in parallel in the case of lithium cobalt oxide if you're using 18650 cells well you'll need up to a few hundred of them connected in parallel due to their smaller capacity size the smaller the cell the more cells you'll need to run your system to calculate the minimum size recommended for each chemistry in watt hours you simply multiply the volts times amps so 200 volts times 100 amp hours equals 20,000 watts hours or 20 kilowatt hours for lithium iron phosphate cells the same calculation goes for lithium cobalt 200 volts times 150 amp hours equals 30,000 watt hours or 30 kilowatt hours and of course you can always run smaller battery packs than this figure suggests your system could work your car will go but at the risk of overstressing your cells remember your batteries are the most expensive part of your project so you don't want to risk damaging them so use this simple math calculation before you order your cells all right, this is everything for this week. I want to thank everyone for watching. I hope some of this information helps you in better understanding batteries and the way you should use them in your own project. Uh, stay tuned for next time in which we're going to be discussing battery size. Does it really matter? We're going to be discussing also bottom balancing versus BMS uh, and bottom balancing versus top balancing. All good things having to do with building your own electric car. So stay tuned for next time. Oh, man. That was a nice segment that Jehu did. You know, I love coffee, coffee. And I love coffee. It's our favorite place in Lucadia. You know what I like more than coffee? Driving. Driving the 818. So do you think we should bail at 818? Yeah, let's get bail out of here. Bail with coffee and go for a drive in the 818. Yeah, let's go get some lunch. Let's go, I'm hungry. All right. I'm buying. Oh, yeah. With your change. Oh, no. <laughs> Thanks for the coffee, Michael. Yeah, right? <laughs> All right, let's do this. Awesome sign. Low battery, need caffeine. Bitch. And I'm hungry. Yeah, right? Taco Let's go get some tacos. I'm ready. I like tacos. Yeah. Not the the best ta you know what the best taco shop in Southern California is, right? Yep. All of them. <laughs> top secret. <laughs> Let's go to the top, top secret taco shop. Top secret taco shop. All right. This is a It's project. like we're racing. It's like we're at the track, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a serious seatbelt system. For a nickname, lightning rod. I'm not that fast. I'm in. Jeez, weird. I'm in. That's bollocks. I'm in. Let's do this. Let's look at this. Oh, safety, there you go. safety first. <laughs> no, I got it. Hey. No, no, no. It's twisted. Is it twisted? <laughs> God, such a retard. Oh. Hey, you said it, not me. Hey. Okay, let's go get some tacos. I'm yeah. Hungry. I'm hungry, bro. See you later. <laughs> Look at all these people riding their bikes to the game. <laughs> Where is the game, is it? Oh, who even cares? Phoenix? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> what she said? I think she said, I love electric cars. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah! Oh, it's an electric hang motor! On. Hey, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Go easy. Up the hill. An electric ride up Are the hill. Are you good? Are you on? I'm on, but don't, oh, no. don't go too crazy. Look at that, you're passing them, everyone. <laughs> it's battery powered. Gee, look at this. Drafting is allowed. Drafting is allowed. That is fine. I don't know if anyone's ever held on to an 818 for a bike. Get my off my head. <laughs> that guy owes us a tip, by the way. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, we just, he just took first place in the ride with his buddies. Oh, man. 
So should we talk about the car of the month? Oh, the, the yeah. vintage Beamer that did a yeah. one-mile peel-out yeah. and smoked a whole set of tires? You met a new friend the other day, didn't you? Al Swack here has <laughs> got a number two. Yeah, yeah, we had uh, Mike Pethel come down. He's starting a second car. And before he can even get into that, we really got to pay some uh, respect to his first car. Uh, he is a great guy. I really enjoyed meeting him. Yeah, so he wins our Charge Magazine car of the month. I have a magazine uh, somewhere that I can you, show It's up right there, but I don't think you can grab it with the... Uh, I can. With the harness, right? Check it out. Oh, look at that. Right hey, there. Charge, that is oh, not a Charge sorry, Magazine. Wrong one. How does that keep happening? Two months in a row. Seriously? Charge, charge DV. Seriously? It really is Charge DV. It just charge has a DV's fake magazine. cover on it. But uh, let's go take a look at uh, Mike Bethel's. He's got a 3.0 CS BMW. Real nice vintage oh, car. smoke. Let's see the smoke. What's wrong with that? I love it. As long as it's coming off the tires. <laughs> <laughs> this is where Mike Pethel has brought the still sleek carcass of a BMW to implant twin electric motors and his monster batteries. I met him more than a year ago in the back of my neighborhood garage. Now I'm asking how someone with no formal training as an engineer, not even any college, can design and build the hottest, coolest car. What, what do you think your top speed would be now? 145? Yeah, it's not that fast. I had no idea if it was going to work or not, and I didn't want anybody to help me figure it out. That was part of that process. So um, I over-engineered it by like a factor of 10 because I didn't know what it was going to come out like, and I just was really afraid that it was going to come out like a golf cart and I was going to ruin this car. All the power goes through here. I'm using two in, to, in parallel to actually... Uh, distribute some of the power, but I'm going to make it. You were on the street, how fast would you be going? 20. Yeah, this is the first time. I'll tell you, the idea of laying on my back in my garage doing this by hand, I mean, I could make the thing have 2,000 horsepower, and I could make one that has 200 horsepower. So the last time it was measured, we peaked it, the battery pack at 824, and I have a chart for that. Oh man, smoky! That was the longest <laughs> peel out I've seen. I love Mike. Yeah, I was talking to him the other day. He's like, he can go down the freeway at like 60 miles an hour and punch it. And do that to 100. He can do that going down the freeway at 60. <laughs> can you believe that? That was a well done video. Yeah. They did a great job yeah, on those that. Those guys, yeah, burn right there, yeah. You so, deserve that, Charge yeah. DV. So, Mike Pethel, you got a magazine coming to you. You'll see it uh, in your little mailbox there. We appreciate it. Your Charged EVs magazine. Uh, car of the month. Yeah, thanks for coming by. It's a pleasure meeting you. I look forward to uh, talking more. Oh, yeah, he's going to help us with the Baja project, too. Oh, he's in. Oh, he's on the team. Yeah. This is going to be a great year. Yeah. Did I ever tell you smoky burnouts make me hungry for tacos? What kind of taco? Uh, a burnout? A, bur a burnout? Taco? tacos. You could probably heat them up with the, uh, on the tire. <laughs>
Oh. I'm gonna go back to the green. <laughs> Look at that, sweating. I love Botox. Oh man, I love it. All right. So let's talk about something. Who are we supposed to talk about next? What's next? What we got? What's your notes? Oh, we got, um... Why are the notes the, down the, there? The boxer yeah. review. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Trent. This is Trent's project. Trent. We just yeah. got that boxer from Texas. Mm -hmm. The client sent out. Right. Uh, there's someone who converted. Right. And they asked you to fix it. And we did. Because Trent was, did. Trent did. Uh-huh. Let's go check out Trent and the first boxer. All right. Let's All see right. what he does. Let's see the final product. Send it. Hey guys, what's up? It's Trent down here at EV West again. Uh, you might remember me from the Chinese Van Neighborhood Electric Project. And we've got our latest thing here, which is a 1999 Porsche Boxster. Uh, this has got a 11 inch DC mid-mounted motor, so this is a fun drifter. Uh, let's go through some of the detail, details of it. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> details of it. All right, so here we are at the front of the car. Um, up here we have 28 of our 68 Calb 100 amp hour cells. Um, since a Texas customer wanted some AC in the cab, we have a Master Flux Sierra AC system. Um, also a music enthusiast, so there is an amplifier up here for the audio system. Um, MR2 power steering pump, so he can drive in style and carry his coffee in one hand. Um, pretty quick car, I'd say Get sideways pretty good. Uh, so let's go to the back, check some of that out. All right, so back here we have uh, the Zilla Z2K controller for the DC motor setup. With the Zilla, you run a hairball, and the hairball and contactor box are hidden in this driver's side compartment here, still easily accessible. On the passenger side compartment, you have the Zyvan DC-DC converter to run the 12 volt system. We have 24 of our 68 cells back here countersunk into the trunk compartment so you still have some baggage area and they cradle the uh, transaxle and uh, split the weight between the sides of it. We'll go ahead and put this thing on the lift to get a peek up underneath at the motor and the remaining battery box set up. The convertible top kind of inhibits us from seeing it from the top which is where it's a real looker. So here we are underneath and on either side of this 11 inch DC motor we have 14 of our 68 cells as low to the ground as we can so we can keep the CG nice and low for handling. All right, so some numbers on this thing. Uh, we're running about 200 kilowatt to the Warp 11 DC motor. Um, it's a 23 kilowatt hour pack. And with our PFC 2500 charger, that'll get you a full charge in about nine hours. Um, range is somewhere around the 70 mark, depending upon how you drive it. And if you're like me, that'll take you about 15 minutes. All right, so now that we've showed you the car, um, we would typically go for a drive right now, but uh, since we're looking a little thin on the rear tires, I think we'll save it. Um, ideally, this would have been an AC setup, but uh, the DC's got a lot of grunt, super fun car, and uh, hopefully the next one will be an AC project, a little bit more range. Thank you, see you next time. So yeah, so that's that's it. You know, we have a rule at the shop. If you're gonna put a DC motor in, it's gotta have a roll bar. And the Boxster just barely covers that rule. That is a complicated car. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, glad that's done and gone and yeah. it's something you could say you did. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we prefer the AC for the daily drivers, but uh, every now and then you need a little street torque. Yeah, so do you, uh, do you have something up your sleeve called the uh, Random Act of Kindness coming out? Oh man, I do. I'm gonna have to put down this taco. I don't even know what you have. They, they might get guacamole on it. Huh. I don't have much, because I'm going to let you purposely upstage me today. I bought a starter plate. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I know. You really must love your fans. If I brought something really cool, you, you'd have a tougher time with it. A starter plate? A starter plate. Who are you going to give it to? Uh, whoever sends us an email. Send us it. What, what's our email again? Is it giveaway? To you? Oh, giveaway at evshow.com. Evshow giveaway at evshow.com. we got a starter plate for you. Go ahead and send it. and. Uh, John Metric, down there at Lone Star EV in Texas. Yeah, he's building a uh, a new dragster, a rail dragster. He's going for 200 miles an hour. He's going to let Gartlets get it first, and then he's going to go get it. That's going to be insane. Mm -hmm. So he's the winner of our random act of kindness last month, and he gets the inertia switch. He gets the crash sensor. I think he might want the starter plate cover more. <laughs> <laughs> 
Notice I'm not uh. crying about the starter plate. <laughs> I'm sweating from the ghost salsa. Holy mackerel. Well, what I do can, you got? I can never let Mike come up with an, you know, a nerdy giveaway. I have to have something called the random act of coolness. And iconic to California, the 308 Ferrari, the perfect 70s car, right? What would be more appropriate than an original oh, Hang 10 man. wallet out of somebody's attic, never ever sold. It was inventory lost for decades, the lost files. I think I have one files. of those. I so think I have that This is the man's home. version. Look at this. This is, Does it smell brand like a 70s? New 70s wallet. <laughs> and look, we even got a female one. So I don't think, the, and then on top of this. Way cooler each, than the starter plate. Yeah, but okay, but it's gonna get better. You know what I'm gonna put in each wallet? Oh, geez. A $20 gift certificate to Bull Taco. Okay. Oh, yeah. And we're gonna send them to people back east, and right? We'll send you, yeah, but. <laughs> no, you, come on out. Come you, out. You have to prove have that you can come to Bull Taco. And you have to come pick up your wallet, and we're gonna have lunch with you at Bull Taco and give you the $20 gift certificate and the wallet. So you have to come and get it. All right, what do they gotta do? Tell them what they gotta do. Just send be the email? first one to get an appointment with us to come down here and get it. <laughs> email <laughs> us at team at evshow.com. At evshow.com or giveaway at evshow.com. I think the ghost pepper's on you a little. You're starting to sweat look a little. Look at this. Yeah, this, look at that. Look at that. Sweating. That, you can't fake this. The ghost pepper. You know, it's a it's a lazy man's workout. It's a, it's a Mexican <laughs> lazy workout. Lazy man's workout. You just <laughs> eat a lot of ghost pepper and you sweat it out. Oh, God. I swear, that's got to be about, you know, that tastes like Coors Light. Hey, does it work for you? Yeah. So email us. I want to have an appointment. We'll have you, we'll bring you down to lunch. We'll buy your lunch at Bull Taco. We'll show you some electric cars and we'll give you your wallet with a $20 Bull Taco gift certificate. Yeah, we'll shoot another show. What's next? I think we have to take the car down to uh, the beach and take a spin. Is that it? We don't have to talk about anything else? No. Really? No. So we're just going to go down to the beach now? We got to wait for the March show for the next stuff. Oh! The Ferrari segment. I knew you were trying to not bring it up. We're not going to do the Ferrari. It got bumped. I'm going to short sheet his bed. Ferrari? All right. Ferrari got bumped. Stuff that taco in your pie hole. Let's mm. go. Get some more ghost cells on it. Are you done? I what do you think? I can't keep one of these things lying around. We need more prop tacos. That's a good taco. Mm. Good taco. Uh, you know what? I wonder if your imager uh. can show the temperature of that salsa. <laughs> <laughs> Break out the flare. The, I want the flare. Let me see what the flare does to the uh, hot sauce. Okay. Oh my god. Ah. Come and get it. <laughs> Hold on. It's, it's like we're supposed to be done, but I'm not done eating this. I food. eat fast, mm. especially when the food is this good. Okay. Are we out of here? Isn't Bull Taco going to be on the EV1000 team? Oh my God. Let's go. Let's do it. So, you know, the Porsche was really neat, right? But uh, there's this whole ACDC thing. Yeah. And uh, there's some people out there that think that you can't get a powerful enough AC motor. So uh, we decided to pull the AMR out of the box the other day just to show people. Is that new? Did you just start carrying it? Uh, we've had them for a little while. Yeah, Is that we've had the them biggest for a little AC while now. It's the biggest AC motor that we can get. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, AM Racing just, God, those guys are great. You know? I mean, how, how beefy is this thing? What's the power? <laughs> it's. <laughs> If you have to ask, it's too much. Oh, come on. Yeah. Really? Well, I, hey, look at that. Oh, it's a Bull Taco, Taco courtesy pass. Look at that. They save so, a uh, we'll reuse that for the uh, random act of coolness. <laughs> yeah, you, you get a parking pass. I already get a giveaway, 40 bucks. <laughs> so uh, I cut together a little piece with the, the motor. OK. Yeah, let's go take a look at All it. All right, check it out. All right, let's roll the AMR footage. So we just wanted to take a moment today to share with you our AM Racing 250-115 double stack permanent magnet motor. Uh, this motor contains two of the uh, popular Remy cartridges and uh, with their HVH uh, high voltage hairpin windings in it. And uh, you know, we don't sell a lot of these. It's the most expensive motor that we have on our website. It's about a $22,000 motor. 
and uh, essentially top of the line. So we wanted to pull one out of the box and kind of show it to you so that you can kind of get a feel for what it looks like uh, in person, a little bit better than just a regular uh, picture on the website. And it's just, as you can see, it's just absolutely gorgeous. I don't know how well the camera's picking up all the milling detail of the billet aluminum case and, you know, nice bright orange anodizing. It's gonna match your uh, high voltage orange cables in there. Um, it's got some unique features that we wanted to show. One of the reasons this can handle so much power, it can basically take about 160 kilowatts per side peak. So overall about a 320 kilowatt motor uh, and overall output is close to about 900 Newton meters of torque or about 500 horsepower. So uh, the motor can go up to about 700 volts and our recommended controller for it is the Reinhardt PM150. A quick note here about these side plates. These are just actually for transport and handling and you'd remove them before you install the motor. Uh, I wanted to show how the sump works. I've, we've gotten a lot of questions about this uh, because, you know, people ask, well, do you need to cool the oil? How does that work? So the motor's sealed and it's filled with oil. And this oil is run off a pump here. This is a pump that runs off of the shaft. And that picks up oil from the sump down here, brings it up and actually pumps it into the end of the shaft. It's just gun drilled out. Uh, and then it's got a couple holes in there where the, the oil can exit. So the oil exits the shaft and basically uh, surrounds the rotor as it's spinning, uh, takes heat out of the rotor, and then brings the oil back down into the sump. The oil in the sump is cooled with an external water cooling system. So we go ahead and feed this with our own external water system, a water pump, radiator, and fan, and we feed it in through a dash, uh, dash 10 AN fitting right here on the end. That basically goes down into the heat exchanger that's covered in the hot oil, draws the heat out of that, and then the hot water exits this fitting here, goes into your own cooling system, cools and, and circulates. So it's a little interesting. Uh, it's not every day you get to kind of see one of these and see what they look like in person. I mean, they're just absolutely gorgeous, uh, super powerful, great uh, race project. There's a lot of guys using this motor out there uh, in some races. I, I think El Mofo is using one of these over in Australia and just really uh, doing a lot of neat things in the Radical SR8 that they have. Uh, and that's it. Just want to take a moment to share uh, this beautiful motor with you guys. Um, that's about it for myself and the AM250-115 double stack. Dale, that's a pretty good cut you put together, Mike. It's not hard when the uh, motor is the star of the show, right? You actually look like, you're kind of like you know what you're doing. Yeah. Impressive. <laughs> how's, the, how's the orange anodizing on that? It's beautiful. I mean, just gorgeous, right? I think yeah. that, you know, put that on a, on a skateboard. You know, speaking of skateboarding, it's been a little while since I had a good hill in me. Yeah, you, uh, the, uh, you know, the swig, the stig with a wing, <laughs> probably wants to take you on in a race, but the only way we're going to do that is if we get to see the Ferrari segment, because I'm really feeling like I'm I told the you back that, of you the know, bus on this deal. I'm just going to have to apologize. Uh, I think we, we might run out of time. We might have to bump the Ferrari segment. That's going to be a bad move. <laughs> On you right now. <laughs> angry stig, right? You don't want an angry stig. <laughs> you don't want an angry stig. Oh man, I tell you what. Take a break and go digest the taco at the beach here? Yeah, let's take let's stop for a while. Yeah, let's do that. Oh well, look at that, it says electric cars park free. <laughs> Oh, now we're at the beach. What are we doing? Uh, let's just take a look at the car. Look at Carter Free. Let's yeah. look at Carter Free. Yeah, beautiful. Let's beach. Check out this car. Okay. And the car. Oh, you want to look at the car? I, I think our viewers do. I want to say, I want to go down there and check this. Out this isn't called two. Oh, Jesus. Not far on the floor. <laughs> oh, man, we're never gonna get him out of here. Let's go. Let's check it out. Okay, let's check it out. Okay, so we really haven't gone over the car, really shown it off since we had the body off and we did some drifting at Adams Motorsport Park. But here it is, the 818. It's got the body all on it. The car is done and ready to go. And it's fully wrapped with a film. Fully wrapped with a film. We got the Pearl White 3M film on there, so it's kind of nice. Especially when you have a fiberglass body, it's nice and easy. Just bang it out, makes it look good. And uh, done, right? Just like that. So what we have, we have the dual AC35 yeah. in there. Uh -huh. We have twin 1239 Curtis controllers. 
We're running at about 150 volts on this one and uh, nice lightweight. The whole key, the customer wanted this thing light. So Eric Hansen from 33 Machine that built it said, give me a race pack. So we just put a 17 kilowatt hour pack in there. Keeps it nice and light. All done, all loaded up, we're at about 2,200 pounds. So it's about a 50 mile range, but it's a quick, fast little track yep. kind of car. Yep, yep, he had this out at Laguna Seca, nice and light, handles the track well. It drives like a race car around Drives here. like a race car. We got a uh, PFC 2500 charger up front on it, so uh, charges it up maybe six hours or something like that for him. Okay. Yeah, pretty quick. And uh, I mean, geez, <laughs> do we even need to say anything else? Like all up and down the coast, we were just getting like molested in this. It's thing. incredibly clean. People yeah. can't stop talking about it. I was texting. It. Uh, Eric earlier, just letting them know, like, oh my God, this is nuts. Everybody loves the car. Yeah, people are trying to jump in off their bicycles on Coast Highway. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So anyways, uh, no better spot to talk about a car than right here, right? Not, uh, excellent. Yeah. Glad Eric it? let us bring it out here. You have anything to add? No, I'm going to go for another ride. And I know, right? You're not going to let me drive it. Why talk about cars? Don't you, you have something them? to go do? No. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not driving it. Okay. You're not driving it. I, I beg to differ. Okay. You're not driving it. Okay. Okay. Whatever. Uh, Whatever. Okay. I'm going to go take care of some gear. I'll be back. See you later. All right. <laughs> Sucker Primo. <laughs> Time to take it for a spin without him. Oh! <laughs> Get in or stay behind. I knew you were going to beat me over here. Bus no, is leaving. no, no, no. Bus is leaving. Dude, 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 dude. Cameras are rolling, dude. Bus is leaving. We got to tell the customer you're driving this thing. We'll just edit it out. It's the stick. We'll just edit it it's out. It's the wig, bro. We'll just edit it Who's out. Who's driving it? Okay. Who's driving it? So I know it's not a Tesla, but I did hide a little something in the frunk. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah. What'd you put in? Yeah. Well, I'll show you on the way home. You're taking me to the top of this hill. I'm kicking you out. You are taking me to the top, all the way to the top. And then you're kicking you out. Yeah. You're out of here. Yeah. That's okay. I got my flip-flops. I got a secret in the frunk. Oh, I bet you do. Stig's bailing. You think you can keep No, up? I am bailing the Stig. You think you can keep up with Stiggins? I am bailing the Stiggins. <laughs> Okay. And then I'm back. See you later, I'm bro. I'm getting my gear. Get out. I'll see you. That's fine with me. I'll out see you at the bottom. All right. I'm taking the uh, taxi I'm five for a spin. Oh my God, I survived. Oh, oh my God. Okay, we made, the, we made the viewers wait long enough. I want to see the Ferrari. You it's want to see time. the Ferrari. You're showing off I want to see the Ferrari. I still haven't seen your Ferrari segment. I don't think you want to see it. Oh, Maybe God. we should just do it next month. No, no, no. Roll Ferrari. Roll okay, the Ferrari seven. footage. Give it okay. to us. Roll it. All right, here we are back at EV West. The cars had some custom fab done over at SRD. New battery box, 24 batteries are going to be fitted in there, done, ready to go. A few th changes up here with the uh, brake and clutch system uh, that is going to be an awesome addition. Here is the existing factory OEM uh, clutch and brake transverse mount assembly that was stock mounted right here, gone and out. 
That was directly attached to the brake booster. Heavy, bulky item. If we were using this on an electric car, we'd also have to have an electric vacuum pump, also wasting space. That's gone. More weight out of the car. In place of it, we have got this custom racing uh, CNC kit here with remote reservoirs tightly mounted on a custom bracket here right above it. We'll get all our plumbing in right in here. The brake pedals, aluminum coming straight down. We have dual reservoirs. Uh, front and back, which is very important because we can adjust them to accommodate for the regen that we're going to use with the electric motors in the back of the car. That's going to be critical for our design and performance. On this side, we've got the hydraulic clutch line that is going to power the tilt and throw out inside of the G50, replacing the cable that was in here before. This is a tight setup. This is going to be incredible. It's light. It fits all into just where the brake box was, saves all this space in the front of the car. This is getting good. Wait till you see what we do next. And the mid-engine compartment here where the triple motor setups, the AC51s are going to go. We've got two of the 6061 aircraft grade aluminum boxes uh, fabricated out of SolarWorks. Uh, after their design sent in, delivered to us, we've had them mounted in on three tabs. They're bolted in place now. So these are custom fit for the batteries we're going to put in. Each box is going to hold 12 of the 48 batteries going into the car. So as you see the bracket back here, custom fabricated in SRD. It's in tight. We'll finish off the welding and painting it when we pull it back out for final fitting. And you've got this thing in with a new uh, frame for the trunk floor. We're going to have an aluminum floor fit through the whole trunk. Go right on top of this. It's a clean, easy fit. As can, then as you can see the shifter and the cable here, we're going to custom cut this to fit when we get the cable lengths custom ordered from Patrick Motorsport. And the brackets here, we've extended them about three inches to accommodate the short nose that we put into uh, onto the end of the G50. This wasn't a stock short nose transmission. So once we get the cables measured in here, we'll get this mounted on. That'll all be set. We'll put the floor in here. We'll put the back in here. Then the trunks can be ready to finish up. All right, here we've got the original USA bumper, solid rubber. Heavy as heck, about 40 something pounds, 41, 42 pounds exactly. Uh, the European bumper installed with a bracket, tight, extremely light, weighs less than seven pounds. Uh, pretty decent condition, takes a lot of weight off the back end of the car. Big deal in performance. This was the original shock that we had in there. That's gone, and you saw a replacement uh, on the inside of the car, much lighter and uh, maybe not designed to take the hit, but certainly designed for performance. Here we are on the back driver's side of the car. You can see how noticeably smaller the side profile of the bumper is. USA bumpers out here, about two inches recessed, sitting strong, nicely placed. Here's the factory spec, three weight gas tank, of which there's two in the car. These came out of the exact positions where you see the L-shaped battery packs in the mid-engine compartment. Our French, this, is our, this is our new In-N-Out French fry maker here. They put potatoes in on the back side of the grill and it just spits them out and we get like steak fries right out of the front of this car. It's a fantastic feature we're building into this vehicle. Right, here you see that we have also put in the brackets for the European conversion of the front bumper. Much recessed in compared to the USA bumper which stuck out almost that much further. Ridiculous. The same weight savings we got on the back, about 50 50 pounds. All right, here we are under the fairing of the car to see the battery box installation. You'll notice that we had some of the frame uh, crunch that we found when we uh, disassembled the car. Uh, the guys at SRD custom fabbed a very lightweight racing steel plate to finish off where the frame was to support the battery box. Put the cross members back in to give us a structure we need back in the car. And then we put a steel cross member in to secure the battery box in the front. We're also doing the same in the back. We've got the custom CNC pedals here. Uh, we did an original uh, diagram. These are installed. We're actually going to put pedals in there two inch longer. They should be right down about here. But we do have them fitted in, the hydraulic clutch, uh, the manual brake, and per our last show, or maybe two shows ago, this is the smart car gas pedal with, Mike's gonna love it, the turbo feature. Uh, you've seen everything we have updated current to the Ferrari. So, um, hey, back to you, uh, me and Mike. Back to me and Mike? What is this stuff? It's, <laughs> it, hey, Michael. Michael. Sorry, Michael, but I have multiple personalities. <laughs> I obviously have a clone doing the Ferrari segment. Ah, uh, you know, I'm just kidding. I can't even complain. That's what a, a day. Of, what a beautiful day. A lot yeah, of progress. Yeah, we got out of the office. Can we make sure that the first of every month falls on a weekend? Uh, our new office is going to be different every time. <sighs> I love this. I love this format. It, if, it, if the chair yeah. doesn't have wheels and I'm not talking casters, it's not an office. <laughs> <laughs>
Anyways, we're going to wrap up the show. Thanks for joining us. This was our February episode, Super Bowl Sunday, 2015. I hope you guys we, really uh, enjoyed it, right? I want to oh hear God. any feedback you have and uh, keep begging us on to do new things. We want to make the show better and better. Yeah, and uh, I, I mean, even if nobody watches the show, we're still going to do this because we're just having too much fun. <laughs> it is fun. You can what pay a day. Me. I don't even have what to pay them this fun. You know what? I had so much fun. I'm going to let you drive me home. Oh, you're Let's buying go dinner, home. I'm driving. Yeah. I fly, you buy. Yeah, we got some editing to do. Good night. Okay. Have a great week. See weekend. you guys. We'll see you next time. Love it. Love this car. Oh, yeah. I'm not buckling up. Oh. Our show seems really familiar today, especially. I wonder why. I don't know. I've never seen a show like this before. But it does remind me, the other day, you know, we have got a Jolly in the shop. And I was watching comedians in cars getting coffee. Oh, Seinfeld and Crackle. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen it, you gotta watch this, right? Good stuff. It is so funny. But that is a, a good car show. I like when uh, Seinfeld picked up Jimmy Kimmel and had a two-part episode. Yeah, right. 20-minute show, took him for a boat ride in a 13-foot Boston Whaler, all original. Oh, God, he was doing his uh, Titanic King of the World. <laughs> and then Seinfeld, he takes his pants off and he's got like these multicolored <laughs> trunks on. We should go pick up Jerry. We need to pick up Seinfeld yeah. in an electric car. And drive him around. Yeah. Like he can still style. buy us coffee. Uh, he, she should. <laughs> we'll buy him lunch if he buys us coffee. Okay. It's a deal. So what are we? Technicians in cars getting coffee? Idiots in electric cars getting caffeine? Funny guys in vehicles getting caffeinated beverages. Funny looking dudes in electric cars getting caffeinated beverages. I'm gonna go register that domain name. And tacos. <laughs> and tacos. <laughs> With a heat sensor.